Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Happy New Year everybody. I'm so glad you could join me today. We're going to be making that gorgeous necklace set that you saw in the introduction. And I can't wait to get started, but before we start, I want to remind you about the timestamps. I always try to include them down below the video in the description section so you can skip forward if you need to, okay? Sometimes I have a tendency to talk a little bit too much in the beginning and I know some of you don't like it, but at the same time I'm sure some of you do like it when I chat with you. But anyway guys, I'm very excited about this new year. I have a lot of things in store for you. I'm planning to do more tutorials and definitely more unboxings. And I'm also thinking about doing some other type of content like live streaming or taking you on trips somewhere visiting bead shops and bead shows. I don't know. I'll think of something and maybe you have some ideas yourself. And if you do, please leave them down in the comment section down below. And speaking of comments, I want to thank you all for leaving such beautiful comments. I really appreciate it. I read every single one of them. Your comments are so kind and generous and they do a great job of lifting me up. There are times when I need a little bit of motivation because it's really difficult being on this platform sometimes. Now having said that, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please think about doing so and don't forget to hit the notification bell because that way you'll be notified every time I release a video. All right, so I think I've done enough talking. We're gonna be making that gorgeous necklace that you saw in the introduction. I'm gonna be using the curated bead box for the month of January. And if you don't subscribe to that box, don't worry, you can still make this necklace set. I'll leave a detailed list of all the materials down below in the description section. So if you need to go out and buy some, you should be able to find the sizes, the colors, and everything. And if you do subscribe to the curated bee box, then this is the video for you. Now, if you're not familiar with that box, I'll leave a link down below so you can go check it out. And I'll also leave a coupon code in case you're interested. Okay, everybody, let's go ahead and get started with a tutorial. Okay, let's go ahead and pick the beads. Here's the box we're going to be using. As you can see, the name of the box is Orchid Oasis, and it's the January box. We're going to be using these vinyl disc beads. They look like Hishi beads to me, but in the description they're listed as vinyl disc beads. We're also going to use these beads here. These are the duo style beads. As you can see, they're in a purple and blue color. And we'll be using these ones as well. These are in a pink and blue color. And we're going to be using this gorgeous pendant. Now to coordinate with this color, we're not going to use these beads here. Okay, these are too green. We're going to dig into the November box and we're going to select some beads that are similar to this color. We'll do that in a few moments. Let's go ahead and pull out the findings starter kit. We'll be using a couple of these lobster claw clasps. We'll be using the beading wire. We'll be using some crimp beads and we'll be using these jump rings. Let me go ahead and put this away. Now here's the November box. And these are the beads that we're going to be using that will coordinate with a pendant. Let me show you. As you can see, they're pretty close in color. They're not exactly identical, but they're close enough that it should coordinate. As you can see, the ones that came in the January box are too green, okay? These are a little bit more blue, so these should work better. We're going to be using some size 80 seed beads in an antique silver color. And here I have a couple of crimp bead covers and some wire guards. I'm going to be using some 20 gauge wire. As you can see, it's in a silver color and it's tarnish resistant. Let me go ahead and remove some of these beads. I don't know how many we'll need just yet, so I'll just pull out a few from each color. I can always come back and get more if I need more. We're going to go ahead and cut some wire, and I'm going to cut myself two inch pieces. But if you're a beginner, I recommend that you cut yourself a little bit more, okay? It's better to have pieces that are a little bit longer than you need than not enough wire. And if your wire needs to be straightened, it's better to do it before you cut it off the spool. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm probably going to need more wire than this, but I just want to get started. As you can see, we have two different colored beads here. We have one that has purple and blue, and then we have one that has blue and pink. Now, they're very close in color, but obviously this one's a little bit darker. And then we have these turquoise beads. So what I have to decide now is how I'm going to build my components. I have to decide what colors to put together, and I have to decide on the configuration. So usually I start by building myself some beaded components, but I don't close both loops until I decide what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and kink my wire at about 3 eighths of an inch down, just like this. 
Now you need to decide how big you want your loop, okay? I'm doing 3 8 of an inch because I kind of know what size loop I want. It all depends on your pliers, okay? And I know that on my pliers, these are by Lindstrom, I have to have mine at about 3 8 of an inch for a medium sized loop. Yours may be different, okay? It depends on your pliers. So basically, I'm going to place it flush up against my pliers like this, okay? And then go ahead and loop it. Just like that. And now I think I'm going to thread one of these turquoise beads on. I've already played around a little bit, so I kind of know what I'm doing. One of these blue and purple beads. And then another turquoise bead. So this is what I have, okay. Let me see how that looks. That looks pretty good. Let me do another one. Once again, I'm going to thread on a turquoise bead, one of these purple and blue beads, and another turquoise bead. And see how that looks. That looks pretty good. But I'm not going to close these off just yet, okay? I'm going to keep them open because I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do yet. I want to experiment a little bit more with the colors. So now I'm going to switch to this lighter color. So once again, I'm kinking my wire at 3 eighths of an inch. I'm going to form my loop. And this time I'm just going to thread one of these on, just the one bead by itself. Okay. And let me do another one. Same thing. That's looking pretty good so far. So the best thing to do guys when you're designing something like this is to just build your components and uh, just close off one end. Don't close off both ends, okay, until you decide what you're going to do. And now I think I'm going to do a single one of these like that. Let me do another one. And I'm going to switch to this pink color now. So this is what we have. I know it's difficult to see what it's going to look like once it's all linked, but this gives you some idea, okay? I think this one is too close to that color, so let me switch and get one that's more pink. Okay, that looks a little bit better. All right, so now that I have some idea of what I'm going to do, let me go ahead and link it, and this will make more sense to you once it's all linked. So basically, I'm just going to grab the wire at the top of the bead like this, line up the bottom loop, kink it, snip off the excess, leaving myself about 3 eighths of an inch. And now I'm going to do another simple loop at this end. Now if your loops aren't lined up, make sure they're lined up. I usually grab another set of pliers and line them up like this. Let me go ahead and do this one now. Once again, I'm going to grab the wire at the top of the bead, line up the bottom loop, kink it, snip off the excess, leaving myself 3 eighths of an inch, and do a simple loop. Okay, so this is how it's going to be connected, okay? And now I'm going to go ahead and close these ones off, and these beads are going to be just by themselves, okay? And by the way, guys, I never throw these away. I keep them, okay? I put them in a bag, and I keep them for future use if I'm building smaller beaded components.
So this is looking pretty good so far, okay? But I'm not done yet. I'm still playing around. I haven't connected anything yet. I just have it laid out and I'm still deciding how I'm going to arrange it. And I find this method to be the easiest method instead of, you know, building everything, connecting everything and then deciding I don't like it. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and finish this side. Okay, so here's what I have so far. Okay, now I want to carry this turquoise color further up the necklace. So I'm going to build another component that looks just like this one. Okay, so I have my turquoise, my dark green, and another turquoise color. And it's going to sit right there like that. Same thing on this side. So turquoise. This is actually blue and purple, not green. I don't know why it said green. So this one's going to sit here like that. Okay, and I think I like that quite a bit. So let me go ahead and close these loops off. All right, so let me show you how I'm going to connect it. I'm just going to open up this loop like this, hook on this component right there, close it up really well, and then open up this one here, connect this component, close it up. Let me go ahead and open up this loop now. Connect the pink one. Close it up. Open up this loop. Connect this one. And close it up. So that's what it looks like. And this one's going to connect to the pendant. So let me go ahead and open up this loop now. And close it up. That's what it looks like. I think that looks really cute. Let me go ahead and do this strand now. So that strand is connected and now I need to connect it to the pendant. So I'm going to open up this loop. Connect it to the pendant and close it up really well. And this is what we have so far. Okay, I think that looks adorable. I really like how it coordinates. I like that the turquoise picks up the color of the pendant. And I didn't want to use too many of the turquoise beads. I just wanted a few to help the whole thing coordinate. And I think it looks adorable. I really do. So now I'm going to repeat this pattern, okay? So as you can see, I have a three beaded component here. It has two turquoise beads and a blue and purple bead in the middle. Then I have a pink and blue bead here, another purple and blue bead, a pink and blue bead, and then the same beaded component here, turquoise, purple and blue, turquoise. I hope that makes sense. It's a very subtle way to arrange the colors, okay? These two are very similar. So it's difficult to tell, but once the whole thing is built, you should be able to see it a lot better. So like I said, I'm going to continue to build the same sequence. Okay. And of course you can build yours however you want. This is just to give you some idea of how to arrange the beads and how to make it work. So anyway, guys, let me go ahead and keep building these components and I'm going to speed up the film to save time and I'll be right back.
Okay, I'm connecting the final beaded components. Let me measure this. Right now I have about 19 and a half inches, okay. Once I add the clasp, it'll be a 20 inch necklace and that's not counting the pendant, all right. But I think this necklace looks really cute so far. Let me go over the colors again. So these three beaded components have two turquoise beads and a purple and blue bead in the middle, okay. Then we have a pink and purple bead by itself another purple and blue bead by itself, a pink and purple bead, and then another three bead combination with the two turquoise beads and the purple and blue bead. Okay, I hope that makes sense. It's a little confusing because the colors are so similar, but you know, just arrange them in a symmetrical way and you can't go wrong. Here's my lobster claw clasp, and here are two jump rings. Let's go ahead and open up one of the jump rings and we'll attach it to this side along with a lobster claw clasp. Make sure you close your jump rings really well. And now on this side we're just going to attach the jump ring alone. Let's go ahead and open it up. Connect it to the loop and close it up. So this was a very quick and easy necklace and I think it looks lovely. I love the colors, it's so pretty and it's a nice length but you know you can make it whatever length you want. You can make it shorter, you can make it longer. I'm just here to give you design ideas. Ultimately it's up to you how long you want to make your necklaces. Let's go ahead and make a shorter necklace now to coordinate with this one and we're going to be using these lovely vinyl disc beads or hishi beads. Now whenever you're threading these kinds of beads, okay, it's best to keep them on the strand. Don't take them off the strand and then try to load them because it'll be too time consuming. I mean it's up to you how you want to do it. I just prefer not to do that. I like to just offload straight from the strand. I'm going to cut myself a piece that's about 20 inches long, okay. I want my necklace to be 16 inches. It's going to be a choker style necklace, but you can make yours as long as you want, okay. It's completely up to you. Whatever you do, just make sure you leave yourself two inches at each end of the beading wire to crimp off and add the uh, clasp and everything. You'll need a bead stopper or a clip of some sort, okay. Let me go ahead and open up this end. A couple of them fell off but that's no big deal, I'll just thread them on. So basically what I do guys is I come over here and I grab a stack, okay, like maybe half an inch or so, something like that, like this, and then I just thread them directly onto the beading wire, just like that, okay. I'm not counting them, but you can certainly count them, okay, if you want to be precise. So I'm going to load about maybe two inches worth of these uh, hishi beads, okay, maybe a little bit less. And now I'm going to grab a couple of the beads from this strand here. And as you can see, some have more pink than others. I'm going to try to find some that have a lot of pink in them. And I'm just going to load one on like this. And see how it looks. And I think that looks cute. And now let me go ahead and thread on a few more of these hishi beads. I call them hishi beads because that's what they look like to me even though like I said before the description says they're vinyl disc beads. I think the difference is that hishi beads are traditionally made out of natural materials, okay, like wood. So this is what we have so far. Okay, I'm trying to pull in the color from the other necklace into this necklace and that's why I have this bead there. Let me go ahead and load some more. Now I do want to measure the stack of hishi beads, okay. I want to make sure that I have similar amounts, okay. And I have a little bit more than one and a half inches there. And it looks like I have about the same on this side. So that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to load another one of these pink beads.
and this is what we have so far. Let me go ahead and load some more of these disc beads. Now before I go any further, I want to see what this looks like up against the other necklace. So let's take a look. And that looks really, really nice. I like that. I think it coordinates nicely. I think these beads really tie the whole thing in. I really like that. So I'm going to continue to load these Hishi beads onto the beading wire. And then I'm going to finish off with the silver seed beads and then a clasp. Okay, I'm back. As you can see, I threaded all the beads on and I did count one of these segments as about 36 beads. Okay, 36 of these disc beads in each of these segments. Okay, as you can see, I only have a few of these left. I guess if I had planned it better and done some math, I could have used all of these up in this design, but I'm not that concerned because I may use these for some earrings later on. So now I'm going to finish the strands by loading some seed beads. Here are my seed beads. Let me go ahead and see how much we need. This measures about 10 inches, which means I'm going to thread about three inches worth of seed beads on each end. Maybe I'll thread a little bit less since the jump rings and the lobster claw clasp will add to the length. I am going to use this magic rod. Okay, I carry these in my Etsy store and I just find it really easy to pick up the seed beads just like this. You know, the rod is nice and rigid, so I'm able to pick them up really quickly like this. Okay. And then I like to load them directly from the rod onto the beading wire and I'll show you how I do that in just a moment. Of course you don't have to use these rods guys, okay? You can just load your seed beads directly onto your beading wire. But I find that um, using the rods is a little bit quicker and easier. Basically once I have the desired length what I do is I offload directly from the rod and since the beads are in perfect alignment, I'm able to grab multiples like this and load them directly onto my beading wire just like this all at once. Okay. Like I said, guys, you don't have to use the rods. Okay. I'm just showing you a different method and I do carry these in my Etsy store, like I said before, and I'll leave a link down below if you're interested. But anyway, I'm going to continue to load these seed beads until I get the correct length, okay, and I'll meet you back. I'm almost done, I'm just measuring my C beads and I want to make sure that both are the same, okay. So that's the other benefit, I can actually load multiple rods and hold them up against each other to make sure they're the same length. I think I need a couple more or maybe one more and that looks pretty good. As you can see I finished threading the seed beads and now we're going to go ahead and attach the clasp. Here's a couple of crimp beads, they're so small you can barely see them. My two wire guardians and two crimp bead covers. I'm going to be using these crimping plies by Zuron. So basically we're just going to thread on one of these crimp beads and now we're going to thread on a wire guard or a wire guardian. You go in through one end like this, take the tail and go in through the other end. It's a little tricky but I'll get it just like that. Okay, and now take the tail and thread it back through the crimp bead and bring the whole thing down like this. It's a good idea to close these little legs. And now you do want to make sure that the beading wire is not crossed inside that crimp bead and that looks pretty good. And now I'm going to go ahead and place it inside the first divot. That's the one that creates the U shape or the taco shape. And then turn it on its side. 
place the bead inside one of the three notches. I'm going to choose the middle one. And once you squeeze it, it should fold that crimp bead over. And I always go to the first notch as well to tighten it up a little bit. And this is what you should have. And now I'm going to go ahead and attach a crimp bead cover like this and then gently close it up. I like to use my crimping pliers, but you do have to be careful. You don't want to dent that metal, okay? Sometimes it's easier to use this kind. And I do go around the whole bead until I get a nice round shape. And now I'm going to cut off the excess beading wire. Bring everything down. And we'll do the same thing on this side now. Now before you crimp it down, check for spaces. Make sure you don't have any spaces. But at the same time, you don't want it to be really tight. Okay, you want it to be somewhat fluid. Now this beading wire is not going to drape like a 49 strand beading wire would. This one's 7 strand, I believe. So it's going to be a little bit stiff. Okay, just keep that in mind. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to this side now. It's a little tricky to finish this side, this end, but do the best you can. Close up the little legs and then pull the beading wire until you take out all the slack. And now I'm going to go ahead and crimp this bead. Turn it on its side. Fold the crimp bead over. Snip off the excess and now I'm going to slide on a crimp bead cover and close it up. These are kind of small so they're difficult to close. I think they're about three millimeters in size. They're about as big as the 80 seed beads, maybe a little bit bigger. So now that's done. I have two jump rings and here's my lobster claw clasp. Let's go ahead and open up this jump ring. Attach the clasp, attach it to one of the loops, close it up. And now on this side we're just going to have a jump ring. And this necklace is done. I think it's adorable. Don't you think? And look how cute it looks with this necklace. Isn't this set adorable? I love it. I love the colors. I love the turquoise and the purple and the pendant. Let me show you the top. It's hard to see the whole thing. Okay. And here's the bottom. I like that it's two separate necklaces. I like the option of wearing one or both. So anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and put this on and show you what it looks like. Well, I decided to take the choker necklace off because sometimes less is more and I actually like this one better for some reason. I don't know if it's the colors, the beads, but anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I hope I've given you some inspiration. I hope you can go out and make your own necklaces. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.